everybody, welcome to Harp's Court. You know, I think a lot of times we use the word great in a very sassy way, right? Everybody is great, but to me, that's just not the case. But my guest today doesn't have anything to worry about when it comes to being great, because I have the great Jeff Van Gundy on, and I'm totally excited, Coach Van Gundy, to have you on. And I was thinking about what to ask you to start. And I came up with, I think you would be the perfect person, Jeff, to ask, ask this question. What would you say the legacy of Bill Russell is both on and off the court? We lost him on July 31st. Well, obviously, he's going to go down as one of the great winners to ever play professional sports and a total selfless, team-oriented guy. And then, you know, people I don't think realize that he was, you know, one of the last player coaches and uh, won, a cha won championships as a player coach as well. So I think what he accomplished on the court was uh, incredible. And then I think how he stood up for himself and for uh, the disadvantaged, I think has been well documented, particularly uh, after he passed away. And I think... Um, all of us would be served well by doing a deeper dive into all he did in some very, very challenging circumstances. You know, Jeff, you uh, you got your you started your coaching debut 1989. Am I right? Uh, yeah. So in, uh, in, uh, with, uh, I, came, I came into the NBA in 1989 after yes. I was a high school coach for a year, yeah. and I was in a college assistant for three. Stu Jackson gave you your first chance. That's exactly right. Yeah, when you, uh, Jeff, when you started out as a coach, you've obviously had a tremendous uh, coaching run. When you started out as a coach, I know your father was a coach. Of course, Stan is a coach as well. When you started into coaching, did you expect the kind of success that you had, Jeff, throughout your coaching career in the NBA? You know what, uh, Derek? <laughs> it was so it's so so interesting. Like, I, I played small college basketball. My yeah, dad coached small college basketball. My brother played small college basketball. So that's where I thought uh, I would eventually land. I thought I, you know, I, I coached in high school for a year, um, but I thought eventually I would be a small college coach and and be a very happy one. Uh, <laughs> but because I became a graduate assistant at uh, Providence College. And uh, our best player was Billy Donovan. Okay. The head coach was Rick Pitino. And we had Stu Jackson on the, you know, he was the uh, top assistant. Yes. When we went to the final four that year, like coach Pitino left to the Knicks, Stu went with him. I stayed at Providence and it just so happened a couple years later, coach Pitino decides to go back to college coaching, goes to Kentucky. Stu has an opening for the lowest level uh, assistant and he considers me and I get the job and it was such a blessing, not, not just to get to the NBA, but back then, as you well know, there were such smaller staffs, mm -hmm. you know, so I, I, I did all the scouting. Uh, like, so I would travel, come back, be with the team, um, work with, you know, as many guys as I could, mm -hmm. you know, it was just, it was a time where it was harder to get into the NBA as a coach, right. but once you got in, you had incredible responsibility. And I learned so much from obviously the coaches that I worked for, but also the players. Like I was working with players that were both older, more experienced than I, and I learned so much from them. You know, Jeff, I, uh, I have to take you back because our paths crossed when as coaching players, when I got traded from Dallas to New York in 94, and I'm going to take you back to when I initially got to New York. And a lot of people, Greg Anthony brings it up all the time, of course. A lot of people don't remember. But my first, say, eight to ten games, I had a hard time. I struggled. I uh, mightily, I struggled. I, I'm, I'm man enough to admit that, Jeff. But I remember, this is how I'll always remember Jeff Van Gundy. I remember after practice one day, he says, hey, do you want to come early and get some shots up? And I was telling our producer here, Ted, that you were a better rebounder back then 
than the, the ball machine that you used to run down, <laughs> run down, uh, miss shots and get them back to me just like a ball machine did. Do you remember that? Do you recall that? I do. Um, yeah. uh, and uh, at that struggle uh, that you mentioned, I, I think about it often yeah. too, Derek, um, because I think what everyone forgets you know, you were at the Mavericks in the heyday, right? Where yes. you guys were rolling. And then because of a lot of, uh, you know, things, when you came to us, you know, you were coming from a Mavericks team that was struggling. Yes. And, well, the, struggling, Jeff, I'm sorry to cut you off. Struggling yeah. to, keep, be, to keep from being one of the worst teams in NBA history, by the way. That's exactly right. Yeah. And I think what we all tend to forget is no matter, and you were a great worker as you, you know, I think everybody knows that and you had a natural intensity, but when you came there, uh, you, when you came from Dallas to New York, because you weren't playing winning basketball, I think Golly. you would slip in some habits. And I still remember, you know, coach Riley, this was back when you would correct people mm -hmm. on a daily basis, That's coach right. Riley, <laughs> you know, was correcting you and, you uh, subconsciously rolled your eyes, right? So I remember it like it was practice, yesterday, Jeff. Yeah. Coach Riley said to me, uh, and I'll clean it up. Uh, <laughs> you need to talk to Derek and tell him if, uh, that he shouldn't roll his eyes. So I went up to you and said, I'm not sure if he realized this, but, you know, you're rolling your eyes. And you, <laughs> right, right, right. You, you had some, some, you've had some habits slip. And right. so to your credit, though, um, a lot of guys would uh, reject that type of uh, yeah. critique. Yes. And you went right back to work. And I, that those early morning shooting sessions before mm -hmm. the games, um, you had a natural work ethic. And, and also, I don't think this can be understated. You had pride in your performance. Mm -hmm. And so when you were struggling, you know, you were going to work your way out of it. And you did. And, you know, like you said, I was just looking back at the stats from that year. Uh -huh. You you didn't start for a while. Oh, I know. Not until yeah. that 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 incredible trip to uh yes. it was supposed yeah. to be to Sacramento, but it ended up somewhere else. Right? Reno. And <laughs> yeah. um and then Sacramento and then uh, Coach Riley made this major we had lost five in a row, which yep. never happened. Tell the story time. all the time, Jeff. Yeah, and uh just went on. I think we won 15 straight after that. And I'm just saying, like, um, I think it takes a lot, particularly a person player of your caliber to come in and not start right away. I mean, mm -hmm. if you if think about the coverage today, the media coverage, the social media coverage, <laughs> if you traded for someone as good as you and you ask them to come off the bench, like, and it was for a while. Like, yeah, it was. I think you played 54 games that year, and you started 27. Yeah. And for us. And so, like, the coverage would have been different. But you also had a, a, a nastiness about you that you weren't going to be enticed into negativity by the media either. Right. Even though in New York, they're going to give you every opportunity, uh, you know, to complain. Uh, you never took that bait. You know, Jeff, staying right with, with, with that team in 94, great basketball team. I thought the makeup of our team was fantastic a, a, as a team. And we got to the finals, which is what everybody's goals, goal is when the season starts. When you think back, if you think back, and I'm sure you do from time to time, Jeff, what are a couple of things that went wrong for us in that seven-game series against the Rockets? Well, I do think back because you know I do too. it's hard to get it's hard to get oh. there, you know. And I, I've I only got there uh, twice, you know, and uh, and I'm fortunate to have gotten two opportunities. Neither one we were able to finish off. But in that one, I, I think I I reflect back to game one, and mm -hmm. we. Played well, shot poorly, and I don't know if you remember this. We had this long film session the next day, like it was before yesterday. we played yeah. game two. Yeah, and Coach Riley, uh, you know, had like every missed open jump shot. Right. 
And all he said, and it was you and Starks, and he kept saying, if you want to win, you make them. Man, you guys were, you in particular were so, like you were just sitting there taking it. Yeah. But steam was coming out of your ears. Of course. And we played a great game two and, and won and came back in game three and, you know, Sam Cassell as a rookie made a huge three. Yes, he did. We we win game four and five. And game six is the one. Like we had a shot to win. And we, you know, like in those one point games, you know, we basically lost both games that were close. Game three and game six. Yeah, the other games were close too, but I'm yeah, talking course. like one possession. And and oftentimes that's how fragile it is in those type of circumstances you make the one extra play yes you're a champion they they did the Jeff. yeah they, they, they did, did make those plays that you're speaking of they did and and unfortunately for us we're lamenting what could have been instead of what was but we were a great team no no, great no doubt about it and just to revisit some of the stuff that you were talking about a few minutes ago jeff i didn't deserve to be put in the lineup right away. I anticipated that, I wanted that, but my struggles were real. I'll never forget Coach Riley putting us all on the floor up at uh, SUNY Purchase, right? And he was going down the line talking about what he wanted from each player, you know, you, and he got to me and you was talking about rolling my eyes. I knew it was coming, Jeff, and was really just embar too embarrassed, man, to, to handle it at that particular time. But those were great days, and I, uh, I'll, I'll never forget them in spite of us coming in second that year in the 94 finals. Um, you know, talking about the past a little bit, Jeff, well, you've been in coaching since you said, eight, we said 89, 1989. Who are some of the, the players to you that were great players, on, B players, if you would, that didn't get the credit in your opinion, throughout their career? That, that's a terrific question. See, I'm of the mindset that going to the 94 team, then I'm going to answer your question. That oh, no worries. You can be a champion and display championship qualities without ever winning a championship. And, and I don't think anyone like that I have respect for how they went about their job even those that didn't win championships has anything uh, to be ashamed of or apologize for, or try to, you know, you know, like I always think of Stockton and Malone. Right. So my first B player is Jeff Hornacek. I mm. thought Jeff Hornacek was a <laughs> heck of a player. Boy, you pulled and, one out of the hat, brother. <laughs> yeah. Like he was, he was like, when you talk about not getting credit, mm. he was, he was a guy. I think um, your Dallas teams and my my first NBA game as an assistant, uh, or my first my third I think it was my third game of my first year. We played you guys at home. Yeah, and I don't think I'd ever seen a greater player than Roy Tarpley. Oh. Like Roy Tarpley <laughs> in that game. I don't know what he ended up with. But I remember coming back to the locker room after the game. And you know, I've only been in the NBA for three years. So I was a yeah. high school coach for one and a, and a college assistant for three. And I'm like, I just watched young Patrick Ewing in practice for a month of training camp. And I couldn't believe what I was seeing. And I watched Roy Tarpley turn us out <laughs> inside out. Like I'd never seen, I mean, don't know. <laughs> I was like, this dude is, he may be the greatest player to ever play the game, right? And then, you know, things got in the way. But getting to your teams, I thought you and Blackman behind, you know, Aguirre and Tarpley during their time were great, like, star-level players but never got the credit uh, they deserved. I think Byron Scott in that time or, or James Worthy um, with the great Laker teams – like James Worthy, I don't think people realize <laughs> you had to go up through him all the time, so you do. But, yeah. like, I think when we look back in history, you know, you, you've got the nickname Big Game James. Yeah. Listen, all I remember was Big Game James every time we, like, yeah. the guy was, 
like an incredible force who I think, you know, he was a small forward then, you know, if, if you, if you transposed him into today's game, he'd be one of the great like power forwards of all time. But people just forget like just how good he was. And I'll g- give you another one from the Western conference. Um, and, and I got to coach him, uh, during my time with the Knicks as an assistant, Xavier McDaniel. I thought Xavier McDaniel. Underrated. Was, yeah. So I, I just loved everything about his makeup, his game, um, his competitive nature. You know, to me, uh, we got him on the back end of this mm-hmm. career, but he had such tenacity and heart like um he he was one of a he was one of a kind like and i i was uh grateful to have coached him coach um i say pat riley you say what great leader um and unafraid of like you know i, I he like I never thought he walked around on eggshells. So <laughs> he did. <laughs> I, I, I thought like you know like you know people talk about you know who's coachable and who's not and all that. And, mm-hmm. But I think as a coach you have to you have to coach. And I always thought like he coached. Does that mean he made every right decision? No, no one does. But I thought he was a tremendous leader. Uh, had tremendous command of the locker room. And most importantly, um, Bill Parcells used to say it after the fact, but now I I think about it with Coach Riley a lot. Yeah, He always used to say, Bill Parcells, confrontation clears the air. Mm -hmm. And I thought the air was clear in our locker room because there were many confrontations, you know, that he did not let small problems fester. He attacked them. And he was unafraid of short-term uh, animosity. Mm. Jeff, what about the game now? You know, th- we're always trying to compare players. We're always trying to compare errors. This error was better than this one, better than that one. What do you think about the state of the game? Because it has certainly revived. It has certainly changed if you think about what the league used to be opposed to what it is now. Yeah, I think uh, comparison, uh, Derek, is the thief of joy. Um, every time you start comparing players, errors, uh, eventually someone's going to be offended. And I, I, I don't understand what that purpose serves. Mm-hmm. Uh, the game has certainly evolved, um, and it's played a little bit differently. But what wins and loses basketball games is still the same thing. Do you get more better shots than your opponents? You know, can you get to the free throw line? Do you take care of the ball? Do you guard? Well, Mm. can you finish off your defense with a defensive rebound? You know, so none of that has changed. Maybe how you get the good shots or what's considered a good shot may have changed. But um, I, I think the, the one thing, and this isn't like, I think the skill level, is so great now. I mean, I, I am just like literally mesmerized by some of the shots that some of these guys can make. Mm. Um, I'm also astonished by some of the shots, some of the guys who shouldn't be taking them shoot. <laughs> right? So, you know, it's a double edged sword. But anyway, I, I think the skill level is great. You know, the one thing as a fan of the game that I don't like now um, is that. There's every team plays similarly. I used to like when there were different styles, you know, like yeah. you'd have your, you guys play in the Dick Mata two guard front, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. Then, then the next night you would see, you know, the triangle, and then you would see Reggie Miller uh, running off baseline Down screens. screens. That's and right. Then, that's right. Floppy, yeah, right? Then, floppy up, floppy you, down. Yeah, yeah. All that stuff. And then you'd have a post up team, and then you'd have a uh, Larry Bird, you know, posting pin down, run a pick and roll with Perry. I, I miss the different styles. Um, 
you know, now, now it just, it seems like everybody plays a similar style, which I feel at sometimes, um, you know, I, I just wish there were different teams with different styles. Mm-hmm. Um, but, Everybody's doing the same but, thing right now, basically, because is what yeah, you're alluding you know, like, to. Let's try to get up 43s, yeah. run pick and roll on every possession. Um, and, you know, no one's on the offensive board for the most part. And I just think the the way the game's evolved, everybody plays similarly. And I, I just, that this is just as a fan. As a fan, I like different styles, mm-hmm. you know. But to complain about how good these guys are or try to even compare them to 15 or 20 years ago, like the rules are so much different. Yes. Like, you know, from illegal, no illegal defense to illegal defense. But the big one that I don't think it's talked about enough is the elimination of the hand check, oh. the, the elimination of the physicality. Yeah. Just, this is what always like astounds me about Jordan. Jordan played with no three or very few three point shooters around him. Usually either BJ Armstrong packs and, you know, one guy, one sharpshooter. Uh, there was hand checking. There was no such thing as a flagrant foul. You could right. wind up and just. You <laughs> I know, laugh at them people. now, Jeff. I laugh at yeah. flagrants. Oh, the flagrants are. I, <laughs> I every time there's a flagrant foul and I'm doing the game, I'm like, oh, that that's not a flagrant, and it always is. But anyway, I. That's what still astounds me about Jordan. He had every negative, right? Mm-hmm. Like from rules to three point shooting that surrounded him to the amount of contact that was allowed. And the guy shot over 50%. Yeah. Every year. I was going to say and throughout his career, he did. Yeah. It, it, it was just against really good defense. And back then the rules were all skewed for the defense. And, you know, the mm-hmm. defense got every advantage. Now with the rules today, they're, you know, it's every rule is skewed to help the offense. And that's why I think, to say a guy who averaged like 30 today, you know, is superior to a guy who averaged 22, you know, 20 years ago. I think that comparison is uh, fool- foolish because you're just not playing under the same rules. And if you're not playing under the same rules, it's really hard to compare. You know, Jeff, we do a little segment called Fact or Fiction on Harps Court. And fact or fiction, Luka Doncic will go down as all-time top five players ever before his career's when his career's said and done. That's a hard group to break into. <laughs> no, he's I'm off to a good. Say, he's off to a, an outstanding start, I might add. Yeah, I'm gonna say if you would expand that to top twelve. Yeah. I'm saying fact. Okay. Top five, I don't I, – Wilt – Oh. Wilt, Jabbar, Jordan, LeBron, you know, I don't know. You know, everybody's going to have their own guys. But yeah, like, yeah, of course. I'm just, like, thinking about making the top five. But I'm going to tell you this right now. If you gave me one person in this league, and yes, he, he has some things. I'm, I'm sure he's got to correct. But if yes. you gave me one person to start a team with in the NBA right now, I would draft him first. What makes him so special, Jeff? I mean, he's clearly a special player. What do you think separates him from most young players in this league? We had a lot of great ones out there. Well, I just think the co- combination of size, strength, vision, and the ability, and, and they surrounded him with a good team like that complimented him, right? So he was complimented by the right guys. Mm-hmm. And, and, and his endurance. Like, this guy can run 70 pick and rolls in a game, and he mm-hmm. doesn't wear down. Right. And the guy is he, he's phenomenal. And if he improves his shooting, think about it. When he's making a step back to his left, it's over. Yes. And if he makes a higher rate of his free throws, that's going to give him a, just another tool for an additional point a game. I, I think you could have made the case last year and, and 
you know, Jokic was a phenomenal selection. Yeah. So I'm not taking anything away, but I, I think you could have made the case last year, except for maybe a slower start, maybe a little injury. He was the most valuable player in the league. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I think like they played well without him, but I, I just think like this guy is, he, he is like special. And you knew it from the ability to win the year. European championships when he was a super young guy yes, and his improvement level. And he seems like he's, he's putting more, he's not a great defender, but he's putting more into the defensive end of the floor Yes, because I think he cares about winning. And if you care about winning, you're going to try on defense. And so, uh, yeah, I I mean, I can't say top five, but if you say top 12, I'm going fat. I hear you. I appreciate that, Jeff. Um, Would you admit that the NBA, from a parity standpoint, Jeff, is at an all-time high um, as far as the stars are concerned in this league? I mean, the parity just seems to be somewhere it's never been, in my opinion. Yeah, and I think because of that, you have a number of teams that can win a championship. Right. And you have other teams that everybody thinks is going to be good. I mean, I was reading about the Lakers, right. And you think about um, the Lakers won a championship lost in the first round the next year, Mm -hmm. didn't make the playoffs last year. Right. And that's with Anthony Davis and James. And, you know, obviously they had some injury issues and they also had a hall of famer and Russell Westbrook. Um, So, I think it's like, it's very interesting. And then you look at, like, I think Golden State, Clay Thompson coming back off an injury, Curry being an all-time great. um, Like, are we, like, but they weren't so talented last year. And Boston making it, Mm -hmm. and last year, and I I thought they're very talented. Um, And so I, I like the way, there are multiple teams going into a year that you could see winning it. I mean, and then you watch like a Phoenix team who I think we probably should have seen that they weren't overly talented, but they were so well coached Mm -hmm. and Chris Paul and Booker and Bridges and Aiton formed this core four guys that really know how to play and play well Mm -hmm. together. But I think we may have, because they won a lot, uh, in the regular season and deservedly so that we were astounded when you guys beat them yeah. in the, in the playoffs. But why, why were we astounded? You guys had the best player on the floor. You know what I mean? Like, yes. so it's like, Great that point. should not have been as astounding um, as we made it as we made it out to be. Yeah. Yep. Jeff, I- I'm going to let you go on this one. What are the Knicks getting? I, I know you're like me. You're a huge uh, Brunson fan. What do you think they're getting by uh, being able to end up with Jalen Brunson, who uh, started for the Mavericks last year? Yeah. Well, I think, first of all, uh, Derek, you, you watched him, you know, every game of his career mm-hmm. up until now. Mm-hmm. And I tried to tell people, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, when I when I saw him in summer league before his first year, mm-hmm. he was abominable. He wasn't bad. He was awful. And this is what I love about him. And I, what I've loved about him since I've known him as a young person to a high school player to a college player to where he is now. Incremental improvement. Like, he's driven. He's serious about his game and about winning. And so whatever setbacks he has, he's going to work through them. And that's exactly what he did in Dallas. He went from being awful in summer league before his first season Mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, that level of player right below the all-star level uh, this year in Dallas. I thought he was a tremendous compliment to Doncic. And I think what the Knicks are getting is a very good player with an exceptional work capacity Mm -hmm. and serious approach. And in today's game, when there are so many distractions out there and it is so hard to stay focused 
and keep your team together because of many, many factors. Jalen Brunson uh, is exactly the type of character you would want for every player on your team. And so I think the Knicks hit a home run. I think it's a major loss for Dallas. And uh, I think Dallas will be able to survive and thrive because obviously of Doncic's mm -hmm. greatness, but also Tim Hardaway Jr. coming back off injury, which no one speaks about uh, from last year. Right. And I think they'll be fine. But I think Brunson uh, is a terrific pickup for the Knicks, even though, you know, he has some defensive, you know, liabilities. Yeah, and he, yeah I read something <laughs> this morning about uh, Coach Thibodeau talking about he needs to improve in that area. Yeah, I mean, but again, you're, there are no perfect players in the NBA. Right. And give me a really good player with an exceptional exceptional attitude and serious approach, I'll, I'll take my chances any time in this league. Jeff, really quick, Ja Morant against Michael Jordan, and I'll let you go. Because <laughs> he wanted to smoke. On what, what, what are we, what are we, like, who's the better player? <laughs> he wanted Michael Jordan. He would take Michael Jordan one-on-one, -on -one, is what I heard, Jeff. I, I heard it through the grapevine. Today, today, no, no. I would agree with him. Yeah, today, I'm going to take John Morant today. How old's Jordan now? I, I don't know. He, he got to be close to 60, so I'm going to take him. But I'm going to say this. I do believe if you gave Jordan Three months to get in shape. <laughs> yeah, he's he could average like, eight. He could average eight off the bench. He's built like that, man. There's no question. No, and you yeah. know, you know, I know the respect that you have for Michael Jordan. So, oh, you put because you would post him up. Think about it, like yeah. you know, you, you like you could throw him in the post, and he's going to shoot the fadeaway, yeah, and it's going to go in. Now at the other end, he's not going to be able to move. Oh no, he's helpless on the other end. But no, uh, but hey, John I just find Marais, it funny, Jeff, and I don't know, but I'm sure you do too. I find it funny. That's why I was talking about comparing players, how, and you're supposed to feel this way, but how young guys forget so quickly about the, the mature guys, I won't even call them old, how good the mature guys used to be. I think it's baffling. Yeah, it would be, it would be something like if, uh, you know, a younger, uh, let me see, who was a center back then? Uh, you know, like a young Patrick Ewing would have yeah. said, you know, give me Kareem. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you don't want that. Yeah. Yeah. Careful but, what you ask for, right? Yeah. John Moran, I think Memphis is a great story. Yes. Um, and and John Moran and and his teammates, um, sometimes, you know, like the terms I don't understand. I want want all the smoke. I'm like, I thought smoke was bad, but now it's good. I don't know. But anyway, like you like I, I think it's so hard and, and as a player, right? Yeah. To to be extraordinarily confident mm -hmm. and also humble enough to understand uh where you fit. Mm -hmm. And listen, I'm I'm a guy who challenged Jordan, called him a con man, right? I remember so, it like it was I'm, yesterday, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm speaking from experience, like you know. Um, but you know, it's it's hard. It's it, it's it's hard. But listen, you know, this league is hard. Um, uh, there's a lot of thought about who the best player is. Yeah. But in my mind, in in a one game setting, if I had first pick all time, there's no doubt who I'm taking, and it's yeah. Michael Jordan. Yeah, he's the GOAT. There's no doubt about it. Jeff, you'll never know how much this meant to me, man. I appreciate you uh, getting back to me as quickly as you did, and I'll always have a special place in my heart for you, Jeff. Thanks for your time. Back at you. It was, a, it was an honor to coach you. I appreciate that, Coach.